Most Zoom calls look like this. It's pretty normal, right? I'm looking at the screen so I can see whoever I'm calling and view their facial expressions, but we're never gonna have eye contact. But what if your Zoom calls looked like this? Now this isn't some trick where I'm just looking at the camera and pretending like I can see you. I can actually see myself as if we were on a Zoom call together. I'm gonna show you how to make eye contact during Zoom calls, just like this. Hi, I'm James. I'm an engineer and a productivity coach from Seattle, Washington. I've been working remote for about three years now and it's always bugged me that you can't make eye contact during Zoom calls. No matter where you put the camera, you can never make proper eye contact with the person you're talking to. Without that eye contact, you lose a lot of the connection that you would normally get if you were talking in person. Imagine losing a sale because you couldn't read the room or missing out on that second date because you just couldn't connect. Eye contact is so important that companies like Microsoft are developing AI tools to scan the image, pull out your eyeballs, and rotate them as if they were looking directly at the camera. But wouldn't it be nice if we didn't need crazy AI and uncanny valley looking eyeballs to make eye contact during Zoom calls? Wouldn't it be nice if we could put the camera directly in the middle of the screen? Not like this. But that's not possible. Or is it? Let me introduce you to this device. It's a teleprompter. There's a big half mirrored piece of glass that you can see from this side reflects light. So what you do is you put a screen here which reflects up and to you. And then on the back side, you place a camera right here. Now, normally you might see this used in the news where a news anchor will read some text that scrolls up on the screen here. But you can actually place a monitor right here. What does this mean for us? It means we can make Zoom calls using this device. That means that we can get that camera right in the middle of the screen where we want it. I got this idea from DSLR Video Shooter's amazing video on the ultimate YouTube desk setup. You should go check it out over here. But Caleb's setup is pretty intense. It involves a lot of cables and a lot of setup. And I wanna show you a simpler way to set this up. I'm actually gonna cover three levels. A simple setup, an extra setup, and an expert setup. In the simple setup, we're just using our standard webcam and our teleprompter with a monitor. This monitor is just mirroring one of the monitors on our main computer. This is probably the simplest way to get set up with a teleprompter. And if you already have a webcam, the only thing you need to buy is a teleprompter and the extra monitor. Now, if you want to look extra crispy on your Zoom calls, we're going to swap that webcam for a better camera. Now, to use this better camera, you'll not only need the extra camera, you'll also need a way to capture the image from your camera to your computer. You can do this with a capture card like an Elgato Cam Link or Razer's Ripsaw devices. You'll get amazing eye contact and amazing blurred backgrounds. Now the expert version of this is like the one that DSLR Video Shooter has in his version. We're using a splitter to split the image from the camera to both the capture card and to an HDMI switcher. The switcher is plugged into the computer and directly to the camera. So that way we can use this handy little remote to switch directly between what you're seeing on the computer and what you're seeing on your camera. This is useful if you want to film yourself and be able to see your framing in a much better way than our simple or our extra setup. Now, obviously a teleprompter isn't for everyone. They're big, bulky, require a good amount of setup, and they don't travel well. My teleprompter came with this handy carrying case, but it's still quite bulky. Maybe one day we'll have cameras embedded directly in our screens, but until then, this teleprompter setup is a great way to go. If you're curious about the gear I use for this setup, I'll make sure to include them in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this video about using the iPad and the magic keyboard in a vertical way. Or you might enjoy this video that YouTube thinks you'll like. See you next time.